Hey guys, when it comes to investing your money, it's easy to get overwhelmed by the number of accounts that exist. Which of these accounts should you use to invest for your personal goals? On one hand, you've got your pension or you've got your ISA. On the other hand, you've got your lifetime ISA, you've got a dealing account. Which of these should you be choosing for retirement or perhaps for purchasing a property or even if you're working towards achieving financial independence? Today I want to walk you through the right order of investing your money. To make this video super practical, we're going to have different scenarios. So do make sure you buckle up. I want to walk through various scenarios, whether you're a basic rate taxpayer or higher rate taxpayer, whether you're self-employed or looking to be an entrepreneur and so on. There are six different scenarios that we're going to be walking through today. And to end this video, I'm going to be sharing with you guys what pathway we took on our journey towards becoming financially independent. And I'll also share with you the order in which we're investing our money right now. If you're loving the vibes from today's video, I'd love for you to give me a signal by hitting that subscribe button. Show some love for the work that we put into our videos here at The Humble Penny. Okay, let's dive straight in. So for part one of this video, we're gonna be looking at these different accounts. So the pension, the ISA, the lifetime ISA, as well as a dealing account, often known as a fund and share account. We're gonna be looking at what the benefits are, the pros, the cons of these accounts, just gonna remind us. And then in part two of this video, we're gonna be looking at the order of investing, depending on what scenario you face in your personal life right now. Okay, let's jump in. So given these accounts will have different benefits, different pros and cons, let's start with the pension. And I'm gonna be reading from my phone just to make sure I don't miss any of the details as you read it as well, okay? So core main benefits for investing using a pension is that you get tax relief. This is one of the most important reasons to invest in a pension. In terms of tax relief, we're talking here, a bonus you get from the government. If you're a basic rate taxpayer, to invest £100 into your pension, it would only cost you £80 to do that because you get £20 rebate from the government. If you hire a taxpayer to get £100 invested, you only need to really invest £60 to get £40 rebates from the government. And if you're an additional rate taxpayer, that carries on like that as well. £100 would only cost you £55. Next benefit of investing into a pension is that it's free from inheritance tax, the 40% inheritance tax that some people do have to pay at some point in their lives. And that's because the pension lives outside your estate for inheritance tax purposes. The next benefit is that anyone under the age of 75 can pay into a pension such as a SIP, even if they're not working or earning. So they can still pay into a pension and still get tax relief. You can pay in up to £2,880 in a year and get a tax relief of £720 from the government, giving you a total of £3,600. Next, of course, is that you can get employer contributions as well as get match contributions, depending if it's something that your employer offers. In terms of an annual allowance for a pension, you're allowed up to £40,000 per year, provided you are earning up to that limit in a year as well. In terms of access for your money, you don't get access to your pensions, given current rules until the age of 55. As we've mentioned previously in other videos, that rule is now changing to the age of 57 from the year 2028. And then the main risk to a pension is that the rules can change in the future. Pensions are complicated and they might get more complicated in the future. You know, the tax benefits might not be as favorable and it might become more difficult to access your money potentially. These are risks that are worth mentioning. Next up on the screen is the stocks and shares ISA. This of course is used for investing in stocks, shares, funds, and ETFs for various things, whether you are aiming to buy a property or you're saving for your retirement. A stocks and shares ISA is ideal for so many different purposes. Now in terms of main benefits for a stocks and shares ISA, are that you know, any gains, any profits you make from selling, any of your investments inside a tax-free environment, is not subject to any capital gains tax. You also don't have any income tax on any income that you might generate, such as dividend income from your investments. In terms of allowance, you get a £20,000 allowance on the current rules, and that 20K allowance applies all across your ISAs. Now, in terms of access to your money, you have access to your money whenever you want. And this is a very important point when we're gonna be looking at the order of investing your money in part two of this video. And in addition to that, you do not have any tax on withdrawals. This is what makes the ISA such an attractive place to invest your money. And then finally, the main risks with an ISA really are that if you don't use the allowance in a particular year, you actually... So it definitely pays to make sure that you can max out your ISA as much as you can. 
Up on the screen is a lifetime ISA. Again, looking at all those same categories as the previous accounts, okay? The lifetime ISA is used for saving to purchase your first property or if you're saving towards retirement. Now, in terms of main benefits, again, this is an account that's tax-free like all the other ISAs. You can save up to 4,000 pounds in it per year and get a 25% bonus from the government, making it a total of 5,000. You get a bonus into that account until the age of 50. As I mentioned on the screen now, given you can open a lifetime ISA at the age of 18 and get bonuses all the way to the age of 50, you can potentially earn a maximum of 33,000 pounds of free money by in the way of bonuses given to you by the government. And a final point on the benefits is to mention that there are different types of lifetime ISAs. You can have a cash lifetime ISA or a stocks and shares variety. Now I mentioned earlier, you've got an annual allowance of 4,000 pounds with a 25% bonus giving you a total of 5,000 pounds. Now in terms of accessing your money, you can typically only access your money for purchasing your property, but you do have more flexibility with a lifetime ISA compared to a pension in that you can withdraw from the lifetime ISA, but subject to some early withdrawal penalties. And the main risk that I identified a lifetime ISA is that you cannot really access your money for retirement purposes until the age of 60, compared to the age of 55 with a pension at the moment. Okay, and the final account we're looking at is a dealing account. Now, this is a taxable account, okay? There are no tax-free benefits with this account, but again, this account is ideal for investing in stocks and shares in funds and ETFs and so on, but you don't get the tax benefits as you would with say a stocks and shares ISA, for example. Now the main benefits of a dealing account is that there are no limits on how much you can invest. So there's no cap of 20,000 pounds per year. You can invest as much as you want and you can withdraw as much as you want. You can access your money at any time and a dealing account is great for making use of your other allowances in a year. For example, every UK adult gets a annual capital gains allowance, a tax-free annual gains capital allowance of £12,300 per year given current rules or double that to £24,600 for married couples or those in a civil partnership. You can also use all your other allowances such as your annual dividend tax-free allowance currently sitting at £2,000 per year as well as your personal savings allowance of £1,000 for a basic rate taxpayer or £500 for a higher rate tax. But essentially, you can use that dealing account as you make profits when you sell any investments in that account. You can then use all these various allowances, allowances for capital gains, for dividends, and so on, to offset against those profits that you generate up to your annual tax-free allowance every single year. Now, in terms of accessing your money, you can access your money at any point in a dealing account. And of course, it's worth mentioning that the main risk that comes with a dealing account is that you get taxed essentially. It's not a tax-free environment. Once you've exceeded those annual allowances for capital gains, dividends, and so on, all your profits are then subject to tax, okay? So now that we've covered those four accounts, again, this is very important for leading us into this next section where we're now going to be talking about the order of investing your money. I wanted to just highlight those core benefits and pros and cons of those accounts so that we are very clear on what those are and reminded of them such that we can now talk about the order of investing in a way that's easily understandable given that backdrop of what these pros and cons of the various accounts are. If you're really enjoying this video so far, I'd absolutely love it if you hit that subscribe button and show some love for the work that goes into our videos. The very first scenario we're gonna be looking at is an employee who is aiming for traditional retirement. So scenario one, employee aiming for traditional retirement. Now, I'm gonna assume that this employee is not trying to purchase a house, okay? We're gonna to come to the house scenario later in the video, so please bear with me, okay? So this individual is trying to aim for retirement down the line, and I wanna look in this scenario one at a basic rate individual as well as a higher rate individual, okay? So now let's look at this scenario. So scenario one is scenario 1A, inside of scenario one is basic rate taxpayer whose employer does not match their pension contributions, okay? Because this matters, okay? So if you're one of those first people who your employer is not matching your contributions, but you're, you're a basic rate taxpayer and your, your, your main goal is retirement, here up on the screen is my suggested order of investing your money, okay? Now the first thing I would put money into is into my stocks and shares ISA. I'd be looking to max that out, 
okay? That money is then accessible. You're not worrying about liquidity as you might do with a pension ordinarily, okay? So that's number one. Num second place to invest your money would be into a dealing account. So you've maxed out, let's say you've maxed out your 20K in a year, and you've still got some more money left over, I'd suggest putting it into a dealing account and using some of those benefits I mentioned earlier, uh, capital gains tax and your annual allowances for dividends and so on. And next, if you've got any money left over, I'd suggest actually investing in your lifetime ISA. Here you're using lifetime ISA for retirement purposes, okay? And the reason I've suggested that is that you get it all tax-free at the age of 60, compared to if you'd put it into a pension where 75% based on current rules, 75% of the money going into a pension will get taxed later down the line. Now for a basic rec taxpayer, putting money into a LISA has the same 25% tax relief that you would get on a pension for basic rate taxpayers, okay? So with a, a, a lifetime ISA, as I mentioned before, you're getting that 25% bonus, but with a pension, you're also, as a basic rate taxpayer, also getting that 25% because if you put money into a pension to put 100 pounds in, it will cost you 80 pounds. And, and the reason I favor a lifetime ISA here is because it gives you much more flexibility compared to a regular pension for a basic rate taxpayer, okay? But remember, you know, with a lifetime ISA, you can only put up to 4,000 pounds in a year and wait for that top up, which then means that if you've got more money left over from your net income, by the way, you would then put more money into the fourth account, in which case it will be going into your pension, especially as you are not getting any matched contributions from an employer. Okay, let's look at scenario 1B, where again, this is an employee, but this time around, this employee is getting matched contributions from their employer. They're a basic rate taxpayer, but they're getting matched employer contributions from a pensions perspective. Number one is to put your money into a pension. Number two, into a stocks and shares ISA. Number three, into a dealing account. And number four, into a lifetime ISA. Now the reason for that order is because you're getting match contributions from your employer, you wanna max out your pension and get as much of that free money from your employer as possible. Next, you wanna invest into your stocks and shares ISA because it's a tax-free environment and use up all those benefits that come with a stocks and shares ISA. Next, you wanna put your money into a dealing account and gain access to your other allowances for capital gains tax purposes from you potentially investing in assets that you sell at a profit. You can thereby go about using your annual capital gains tax allowances outside of your typical tax-free environment because a dealing account is a tax taxable account. And then finally, you put it into a lifetime ISA. Okay, now we've covered the basic rate taxpayers scenario for somebody who is saving for retirement. Let's now look at the higher rate tax scenario for the same type of individual who is also saving and investing for their retirement. So again, in scenario 1A, this is a higher rate tax individual whose employer does not match their contributions into a pension. Here is my suggested order of investing. The very first place I suggest to invest your money is into your pension, yes. Now, I mention this because of the really high tax relief you're getting as a higher rate taxpayer. So though you're not getting the match contributions from your employer, which would be great if you got it, but though you're not getting it, it's still definitely worth your while to explore investing your money into a pension first. I mentioned before that 100 pounds invested would cost you only 60 pounds. Let's extrapolate that. If you'd invested 10,000 pounds, it only cost you 6,000 pounds as a higher rate taxpayer. So you can see that it's definitely worth your while getting those additional tax reliefs from the government and compounding then serves to work in your favor, potentially over many decades down the line before you get to retirement. Next, I would then max out my stocks and shares ISA and all the benefits that come with that as mentioned before. And then next, I would explore investing my money in a dealing account. And again, getting all the benefits of using my annual allowances for capital gains tax purposes. And then finally, the lifetime ISA. Although personally speaking, if I was a higher taxpayer in this scenario, I wouldn't really even bother with a, with a lifetime ISA because the tax relief that I'm getting as a higher taxpayer far supersedes what I might get with a lifetime ISA. The lifetime ISA has given me 25% bonus from the government, but I can get a 40% uh, bonus from the same government. So why would I go down the path 
of actually using a lifetime mindset. Now, I say that for my own personal circumstances, you might think differently. Okay, and in scenario 1B for a higher a taxpayer whose employer does match their contributions into a pension, this person is absolutely laughing. Because if you are in this scenario, the very first thing I would do if I was in your shoes would be to max out my pensions. Max, max, max. Get the employer match contributions and put as much as I can into my pensions because I'm getting match contributions, but I'm also getting the tax relief at that 40%, okay? So I'm getting 20 pounds back and getting another 20 pounds if I put 80 pounds into a pension. Or to keep it super simple, 100 pounds investment into my pension would only cost me 60 pounds as a higher rate taxpayer. And then of course, compounding works even more so in my favor because I've got so much more money in my pension and that money over time provided I've got years and years down the line will work in my favor, you know, leaving me in a much wealthier position in the future, although I know I will be taxed later on. You only get 25% of it tax-free. But the cumulative impact of the match contributions as well as the tax relief from the government really leaves you in a much more tax efficient place down the line when it comes to actually starting to withdraw that money from your pension. Okay, so after doing my pension, I would then put money into my stocks and shares ISA for the benefits mentioned previously. Next, it would be into my dealing account. And then finally, with a lifetime ISA, if I was higher a taxpayer, as I mentioned before, I would not be exploring on a very personal level, going any further with a lifetime ISA because I know I can get much higher tax relief by putting my money into a pension instead. You know, do please make sure you make that decision based on your own personal circumstances. You might do something completely opposite to what I'm suggesting and that is completely fine. I'm just sharing how I would do it in your shoes. Okay, now that we've completed scenario one, let's look at scenario two for someone who is an employee but who wants to become an entrepreneur down the line or somebody who is an employee but wants the option of early retirement down the line. This really does change the game a little bit in terms of how you go about investing your money. In that scenario, the most important things really would be access to your money because you want, you know, you want to have that time off, have that option for early retirement, do what you want, that sort of stuff. So access to money is very important. Next is minimizing tax as legally as you can. So in that scenario, my suggested order of investing would be number one to max out your stocks and shares ISA, okay? Use up your annual allowance of 20 grand per year currently, which might increase in the future. Max that out as much as you can. Next, I suggest putting money into a dealing account, okay? So again, you're investing money, but this is a taxable account. Next, I suggest using a lifetime ISA. This is for retirement purposes. Yes, you have to pay a bit of a penalty if you withdraw money from it, but it does offer you a bit more flexibility than a pension does. And then if you've got any money left over in this scenario, the fourth place to put your money is into a pension, okay? But notice the order in which I've done it is to prioritize you having access to your money, having that flexibility, whilst also minimizing your tax and reducing any future uncertainty that may be tied to a pension. Okay, scenario three is if you are somebody who your main goal is to buy a property, okay? You're not trying to retire yet. What you really want is, that might be a secondary goal. Your primary goal is for you to buy a property. If that's you, then here's my suggested order of investing your money. The very first account you should be using is a lifetime ISA. This gives you, gives you the benefit of, you know, if you're a first time buyer, buying, saving in this account and withdrawing this, mo this money without any penalties towards buying a home as a first time buyer. It then serves as an account that you can use towards your retirement. Next account to use is a stocks and shares ISA. If you've got any money left over, max this account as much as you can. Gives you the benefit of being a tax-free environment for capital gains tax, for income tax. Here, your gains are not taxed at all, and you can look to then invest that money that you're saving towards your property, uh, you know, towards building up that deposit over time and eventually making your purchase. If you've got any money, any money left over from investing to your stocks and shares ISA, next account I suggest is a dealing account. Again, you're using those allowances I've talked about earlier. And then finally, you are investing your extra net income into a pension. Okay, so notice the order, the order is given to you having access to that money when it comes to that very exciting day when you put down that deposit and get those keys 
for your new property. Right, scenario first for someone who is self-employed but also saving and investing for retirement. So this person who's self-employed, I am assuming that you are not buying a property, okay? You're purely saving for your retirement. Now, being self-employed, you will not have an employer scheme in place, by nature not be signed up, signed up to auto enrollment as a result. Now here's my suggested order if you are a self-employed person, starting with someone who is a higher rate taxpayer. Now the very first account I'd suggest is to invest your money into a stocks and shares ISA. Why? Now, although you're a higher rate taxpayer and it's, it's much more beneficial, much more tax efficient to put your money into a pension, I'd actually suggest it as stocks and shares ISA because for people who are self-employed, having access to your money is actually pretty important. It adds a bit as a bit of a safe safety blanket, you know, in the event that things don't quite go as well as you might want. In that sense, having money invested in your stocks and shares ISA, such that you have that accessibility, is very important. And over time, you know, once you've built up that stocks and shares ISA, you want to give more priority to your second account, which I'm calling your pension account. Now, again, this is where you start to get the benefits of being a higher taxpayer and the higher levels of tax relief that come with using an account like a pension account. Next is if you've got more money then I would suggest using a dealing account for the same reasons mentioned previously. And then finally, a lifetime ISA. Although as I mentioned before, as a higher taxpayer, I would not personally uh, be using a lifetime ISA. But there are benefits of course of using a lifetime ISA and you should make that assessment for yourself. With a basic rate taxpayer who's self-employed, the first account I'd suggest is a stocks and shares ISA for the reasons I mentioned before around just having more security and access to some money. Next would be a dealing account. So notice previously I mentioned a pension as a second option for the higher rate taxpayer. For the basic rate taxpayer, I'd mentioned a dealing account. Again, here it's for you to use up all those allowances that you have, such as your capital gains tax allowances. And then the third place I would invest my money as a basic rate taxpayer who's self-employed would be into a pension. Uh, now I should mention that you might choose to put a pension second place depending on to what extent you'd built up, you know, easily ac accessible funds within your stocks and shares ISA in the very first suggestion that I made, okay? So do I put them as stocks and shares ISA, dealing accounts and then pension, you might actually decide to go stocks and shares ISA, pension, and then potentially a dealing account. And then finally will be a lifetime ISA. Now I should mention though that, you know, the choice between a pension and a lifetime ISA for a basic rate taxpayer who's self-employed is quite unclear, okay? So it, although I've put the lifetime ISA last, it might be that the lifetime ISA might actually choose to be third place over the pension as I've got it in my current order, okay? But it's it's currently unclear, which is actually a better option for a basic rate taxpayer who's self-employed. But as I mentioned earlier, my chosen order would be stocks and shares ISA, then a dealing account, then a pension, and then a lifetime ISA if you are a basic rate taxpayer who's self-employed. Okay, I thought I'd include a scenario for a director of a limited company, which is scenario number five, okay? So here I'm assuming you're a sole director of a limited company and you don't have another job that you're doing somewhere else. I'm just gonna share you know, what my suggested order of invest of investing would be. I'm also assuming here that you're not trying to buy a property or anything like that. You just run a business to which you are a director of that business. My suggested order would be, number one would be to max out your pensions. Now I'm suggesting this because uh, as a director of a limited company, you can pay from your business gross into your own pension within your company, okay? And you can pay into it gross and that amount could become 100% tax deductible as an expense for your company. So you're not paying any tax on that pension that's been paid into your own pension account within the business, okay? If that makes sense, okay? So you're going directly from the business and paying it straight into your pension. And from a company perspective, it is a tax deductible expense. And you can pay up to the maximum of 40,000 pounds in a given year. And there are circumstances within which you can actually backdate uh, if you've not made previous pension contributions into your pension as a director of a limited company, but you actually had a pension scheme set up, there are circumstances in which you can actually go back another two years and pay up to 120,000 pounds into your pension. Okay, for something like that, do make sure you go ahead and seek some advice from an accountant to give you the relevant guidance to that. Now, after investing into the pension, 
I would then invest into a stocks and shares ISA as option number two. You know, probably be more tax efficient to pay yourself in dividends uh, and mix and mixing that with uh, some salary. Once that money hits your bank account, you then have the option of paying more into your stocks and shares ISA, where you can get the benefits of tax-free, you know, gains uh, from your money being invested. And then the final account I'd invest into as a director of a limited company is into a dealing account again for the reasons I've mentioned in other parts of this video. This is actually a good place for me to let you guys know that we made a previous video uh, showing you how to pay yourself as a limited company director. If you've not seen that video, I go into so much detail. I'll link to it below and above for you to head over and check it out. Okay, so at this stage of the video, I wanted to just share with you guys what we actually did on our way towards becoming financially independent, okay? What order did we invest our money? So we're now financially independent as well as now completely mortgage free. But when we were going on this journey, here's our exact order of investing. Bear in mind, by the way, back then there was no lifetime ISA or anything like that, okay? So the very first thing we did was to start investing via a stocks and shares ISA. Next, we invested in our home. We bought a house and started to make very significant overpayments into that house. At the same time, you know, back then pension laws were not, you know, it wasn't compulsory for employers to pay money into an employee's pension. That came later on, you know, auto enrollment and things like that. Pensions started to become more important as my employer started to pay into my pension and started to, I said to have employers who would match my contribution. That's when I then started to take my pensions a bit more seriously. And then anything above all of these, we would then explore putting into a dealing account, okay? But the biggest areas for us on that journey were the stocks and shares ISA, as well as trying to pay off our home. And now that we've actually, you know, become financially independent, but we're still earning an income, here is the way we currently invest our money. So the very first account we're paying to uh, is into our pensions, okay? because you know we run a business and that business as a director of a limited company, you can pay yourself a pension and that pension is a tax deductible expense. So for us, it's actually a really good way for us to make sure that we are investing in ourselves. Next is the stocks and shares ISA, uh, you know, from a combination of dividends as well as salary. Bits from that then go into our stocks and shares ISA to make sure that we are maxing out stocks and shares ISAs. Then after that, we pay into a dealing account. The goal for us, as I mentioned in that order, is to max out as much as we can into our pension, max out the stocks and shares ISA, then everything else goes into a dealing account. We're currently not investing in a lifetime ISA at the moment. Wow, guys, I feel like we've been on a bit of a marathon and I hope all the things I shared on this video actually made a lot of sense to you guys, okay? I'd actually love to hear from you guys in the comments. In what order are you currently investing your money? Jump in the comments and let me know. The key thing to mention as I actually conclude this video is to say that what matters really when it comes to investing your money is that you are choosing the right accounts that fit the type of goals that you are trying to achieve for your personal circumstances, okay? So you can have a combination of accounts. You can have a pension with an ISA. You can have an, you know, a stocks and shares ISA with a lifetime ISA. You can have a combination of these various accounts. But the key thing is to make sure that you are investing in the right order into these accounts for your very own personal circumstances. If you really enjoyed this video, Guys, would absolutely love it if you hit that subscribe button, show some love and share this video with somebody else. This is such an important topic that I know that so many people will get so much value from. So really appreciate it if you shared it with one other person who might be a friend. Thanks again for watching guys. And I look forward to seeing you guys in the comments. As always people, in all things, be thankful and seek joy. Take care and see you on our next video.